guys, this is Gabriel from Solitech. I'm going to be doing a quick blog about SolarWorks plastics. Um, as you can see here, I've got a plastic cup that I've modeled in SolarWorks. Uh, I want to now test use SolarWorks plastic to test if this part is going to have any issues in the uh, injection molding process that I'm going to use to actually fabricate this. Now, as you can see, I've got a SolarWorks plastics tab and the plastics manager right next to my feature design tree. Um, the first thing I need to do is actually mesh this because I've got no other options. I'm actually going to use a shelling mesh. Um, the difference between a shelling mesh and a solid mesh is just that the shelling does the outsides and the insides of it. Um, and I can, and I don't need the inside, the actual insides because this is quite a thin part. So the triangle size is three that I'm just going to put three millimeters and then I'm just going to mesh that. You can see that's quite quick um, and you can see what the mesh result is. So we hit next, you can see that it's waterproof and that's quite good. That's a good uh, result to have and more functions to uh, fine tune my mesh. Now I've got more options and a lot of these are now um, un, uh, they're available. So the next thing I need to do is select a polymer. Um, using our database, there's over 4,000 plastic parts, uh, plastic materials that I can use. Um, I'm actually just going to use an ABS plastic, just a generic one. Um, and I'm going to have a quick look at the parameters that are going to be used in my calculation, such as melt temperature, max temperature, ejection temperature, and so on and so forth. Um, so we hit OK. So that's set my polymer that I'm going to use for my simulation. I can set my machine, what type of machine I'm going to use, and you can see all these different types of brands. But I actually am just going to use a default one um, with some predefined values that I've set. Um, next thing is just setting up our flow settings. So our machine is going to be pumping out uh, molten plastic for 0.17 seconds. Uh, the melt temperature, the mold temperature are all taken from that database that we selected uh, the ABS plastic from. Next thing I need to do is actually select whereabouts the molten plastic is going to go into my part from the mold. So let's select this point here, just in the middle of that face. Um, and this is actually based off that mesh. If we just open up the mesh, it's just smack bang in the middle there. And that's what we wanted. Just hit add. And that's it. That's We've set it up. We just hit the flow button. And that's actually now starting to calculate the results. I'm going to put this to the side because what will actually happen is it'll start giving us a preview of my results as it's calculating it. And it's giving us a detailed um, results here as well. Uh, what the pressure is how much the processing time has gone, any warnings, you can see here that it said it's reached the max injection pressure, so the machine itself could only produce 100 megapascals of pressure, and already that is telling me it's too small, and right now that's what we call a short shot, so I've now found out before anything has happened that my part will not be able to be uh, created using the plastic injection molding using that machine because it's not going to fill completely. So the rest of my results are irrelevant because it's just not going to fill. Now because this is integrated into SolidWorks, I can quickly just change the features in my in my part and just say instead of 0.6, which is quite thin, let's just make that 1.5. And then let's go back into the plastics and just remesh that. Just using the same values that I had before. Just mesh this. Um, because we remeshed it, we changed the actual geometry. We have to we have to select the gate again, but that's pretty easy, pretty quick. Hit add, and then we can start, we can start running that again. So again, that's running in the background with the new updated results, and hopefully this time it'll fill, and also hopefully this time it'll give me some advice or using the results advice, it'll just summarize what the results are telling me, telling me if this is going to be a really easy job or any other issues that I may have. So again, it's giving me all the detailed information, giving me the preview as I go along. And it doesn't take too long to actually run this calculation. And now you can see here that the pressure, it's gone past where it originally was before. And the pressure is also much lower than it was before. It would have already reached the maximum pressure by then. So after it's finished calculating, it'll actually just tell me, yep, that was successful and start calculating world lines, air traps. These important information are really good for us so that we can design our part 
for manufacture. And that's completed successfully. And as I mentioned, I've got a results advisor and it's actually an orange, red, orange and green. Orange means it's going to be a, a medium difficulty um, job. And it's told me that it's successfully filled with a pressure of so, um, and it needs this much force to hold the mold in place, a clamp force. And the injection pressure was more than 50, but less than 90. It was actually 67.9% of that. So that's okay. Um, at least my part will fill and that's great which means that I can now view other results such as the fill time, which is 1.0 seconds, the pressure at the end, which is obviously what it tells us here, and more importantly, the cooling time. And the cooling time will determine how many of these parts we can make or how fast we can make them. So 5.7 seconds plus about one before, which is about seven seconds per part to fill, to cool enough for it not to um, warp after we eject it. And then we can just see the animation with the world lines and air traps at the same time. Okay, so that's just a brief overview of SolarWorks Plastics. If you have any questions, shoot an email through um, or add it to the comments. Thanks, guys.